Well, welcome back everyone to our daily devotions. Um, we pray that these devotions uh, find you well each day. We've titled today's installment, Temptation and the Cookie Jar. We'll explain, okay, as the devotion goes on. I start with a story. Um, little Tommy's mother found um, her son in the kitchen and his hand was in the cookie jar. And so she said to him, what are you doing? Kind of a rhetorical question, I guess, but he replied, I'm fighting temptation. You know, like Tommy, if your hand is in the cookie jar of temptation, it's already too late. You're going to fall more times than you stand. See, it was cookies for Tommy, but maybe for you, it's a secret habit or an ongoing hangup that you just can't break. Either way, you need a combination of confession and accountability to win your battles with temptations and the cookie jar as it comes your way, as it presents itself to you. You know, you must remember uh, the enemy is very wise. Um, he's had a very simple strategy from the very beginning, and it always seems to involve a solicitation of evil and really trying to get us to bite and trying to get us to give in to our sinful desires. And so really, the only surefire way to do it, as we mentioned, is through confession and accountability. And so here's the first principle. Start with a humble confession before the Lord. It has to be humble. It can't be a blame-shifting confession. Some people pray like that. Well, Lord, this is why I did this, and this is why I did that. Guess what? That's not confession. That's kind of like a, a complaint, really, about somebody else. That's kind of what Adam and Eve did. Remember, Adam was, you know, blaming Eve and, and blaming God, and that's part of the sinful nature to look for a scapegoat. So start with the humble confession. Look what it says in Psalm 32, verses 3 and 5. David said, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Verse 4, for day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Now, growing up, I viewed confession as the penalty box at the church because I had a Catholic upbringing. Um, usually your confession, if it was once a week or a particular season, um, you had to have the kind of a starting point. They called it the act of contrition. That was kind of like your preamble before you got into your dark, dirty secrets. Uh, but obviously, that wasn't a legitimate confession because only God has the power to forgive you and I. Now, if I sinned against somebody else and asked them for forgiveness, that's a different story. But that's not what we were being shoveled back then. Nevertheless, after discovering the truth of the Scriptures, I began to view confession not as some religious obligation, but a beautiful step of restoration that was more of a blessing than a burden. See, whenever you come to God with a humble and transparent heart, you could expect more mercy from God. In fact, the scripture goes as far to say that God will never reject a broken and contrite heart, Psalm 51, 17. And so if you're going to defeat your temptations with the cookie jar, it's got to start with confession, a humble, honest, sincere confession before God. Take out the blame shifting and the complaining and get real with God. Because if you don't get real with God, you're never going to get right with God. Secondly, the second principle to defeating temptation is accountability. You got to step forward with honest accountability. You must realize that there, there are significant gains to be made in your journey with God when you, had, when you have candid conversations about your struggles as it pertains to temptations. Now, when you share your struggles about the cookie jar with some trusted, mature believers, perhaps leaders, could be a group leader, could be a teacher, a pastor, a friend in the faith, when you devalue that information, what you are actually doing is, it's like diffusing a bomb that's about to go off in your life. Because that's really what temptation is. You keep giving in and eventually it blows up in your face. 
when you share your temptations with a trusted leader or mature believer, you are diffusing the bomb that the devil is hoping will go off in your life and just wreck and ruin your life or your character, your witness for Christ later on. And so it's vital that you have accountability. Now, before I read James 5, 16, this implies then, assumes then, that you gotta be connected to other believers to even have accountability. There's no such thing as Lone Ranger Christians. Now, yes, you must insulate yourself with the word of God, as we say, but you're not to isolate yourself from the people of God. You gotta be connected. One of the chief strategies of the enemy is divide and conquer. You will not be able to have appropriate accountability if you're too busy or I'm too busy trying to be our own man, our own woman, and thinking we could defeat it on our own. It doesn't work that way. You might say, how do you know that? Well, trial and error. I've fallen on my face more times than I care to admit. Therefore, accountability, accountability, accountability. Look what it says in James 5.16. Therefore, confess your sins. So confession is still in the the process here to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person has great power as it is working. Now, this is not saying that you have to go to a person and they could absolve you from sins and being God's mediator. No, there's only one mediator between God and man. We know it's Jesus Christ. Rather, in talking with somebody about your sins and confessing it to them, not for them to forgive you, unless, again, you've directly offended them, but simply being honest with somebody, that leads to healing. We must realize the healing is in the honesty of your confession, not the eloquence. You know, you have lots of people, they try to pray with with fancy words and change their tone. And again, the preambles that we were used to growing up with, that does nothing for you. God is looking for a humble and honest confession to him, and he's looking for us to be honest with each other. There are, as I mentioned, great gains and progress to be made when you do that. It's gonna lift the burden off of you when, you're, when you become honest with somebody. I mean, just to be able to tell somebody, man, I'm blowing it in this area. Man, I can't keep my hand out of this cookie jar. Man, I can't keep my hand out of that cookie jar. That is the beginning of healing in your life because you're willing to be honest and you're, you're confessing your sins to one another. Now, the prayer of the righteous availeth much. We see this throughout scripture, whether it is the example that James 5 provides, which is the context of this verse with Elijah or any other story in the Bible. When you seek God this way, it has powerful results. You know, trying to fight temptation with mere willpower or your own human strategies is the equivalency of showing up to war where they have tanks and missiles and long range missile shots that could be fired at you and you come with a plastic fork and a plastic knife. How ridiculous would that be? See, if you're gonna keep your hand out of the cookie jar, if you're gonna stay out of the kitchen of sin, then you're gonna need to be a person who has a daily time of confession with the Lord and you have the support system of strong believers in your life that you are sharing your shortcomings with them. And so whatever size of the solicitation that you're facing, however difficult the temptation might seem, realize that there's nothing new under the sun, um, that other people have been tempted in the same way or in similar ways than you have. And God has put more in you, the Holy Spirit and his word, and even more around you in terms of the people of God then is coming against you and upon you. It's time for you and I to grow up. We can't be like little Tommy making excuses and saying that we're fighting temptation with our hand in a cookie jar. How ridiculous is that? Again, it's too late. It's too late if you're in the bar and you're trying to avoid a drink. It's too late if you're online visiting places you shouldn't and you're giving in to lustful temptations. It's too late if you're listening to gossip and then thinking that you're gonna be a person of integrity. And on and on we go. All of us, need to be wise to the fact that there's great power in confession to the Lord and accountability to other believers. And so may God give us the strength. 
May we overcome our temptations by the word of God and the spirit of God and with the help of fellow brothers and sisters. May we then turn around and do the same and help others as we're told in Galatians to carry one another's burdens. And in so doing, we fulfill the law of Christ. May God bless you and may he give us the strength to stay out of the kitchen and away from the cookie jar. Thank you.